Well, if you have reached to this step, then it uh, means that you actually have a robot. Indeed, you can, it's the first time you, you can play the simulation and uh, the robot doesn't fall apart. Even you can check that on the other view as well, so the parts don't fall apart, everything is correct due to the fact that we have the proper hierarchy and also all settings are properly, so if you don't see any warning here, means that everything is properly configured, okay? Ready with the joints moving, uh, dynamic parts and so on, okay? So yeah, okay, so first, this is the first step, as I, or the, the, uh, the actual robot, but uh, this robot has or includes a sonar sensor, okay? So in this step, I'm just simply uh, going to explain how to uh, create this uh, sonar sensor, or proximity sensor, and um, this is something uh, we can easily uh, create from the app menu, proximity sensor, the type of sensor we need is a cone type, yeah, there it is, and by default it's pointing upwards, so we can do uh, a rotation uh, of minus 90 degrees, this is the actual uh, setting I have here, in x, in x axis, as you, you, you can clearly see that, this is x axis pointing there and if I do the minus 90 degrees it will be pointing uh, forward, so yeah, that's it. And now what I need to do is to uh, make or place this sensor in the same center or the same uh, reference system as the sonar sensor or the sonar object, okay? So I go for the uh, position translation uh, dialog and as you, you, what I have done is select first the sensor then the sonar and then apply the selection and there I have the sonar, okay, uh, with the, se the sensor, uh, uh, related with the sonar. So uh, it is quite obvious that you want this sensor to move uh, as the robot moves, so this needs to be included in the robot, I usually include it here as part of the sonar, okay? So whenever the robot moves, we'll move the sonar and actually we'll move the proximity sensor. Okay, so uh, if you click on the simulation now, okay, you will have the sensor uh, detecting, okay? But let's configure it in a proper way in which, which is more, uh, it's closer to the actual sensor. So let's access to the properties of the sensor, double click here, and I usually use this uh, with this parameter I usually set this value here, so yeah, and uh, this one I usually select that one, and 60 degrees, yeah, that's it. That's the common uh, setting I usually use for this sensor, and now if you click here, you see that the sensor is actually detecting the floor, okay? This is something we, we don't want. Uh, the reason is that the floor is uh, intersecting with the volume or the detection volume we have here and the floor has uh, a detectable property on, okay? So this is something we can uh, disable. So if you go for uh, the resizable floor, that one, and you go for this object here, yeah, and you double click on the icon, you go for the common properties, you see that by default this object here has the depth table uh, property enabled. So we can just simply go or click on details and uncheck the ultrasonic sensor. Yeah, and now it won't be detected by ultrasonic sensors. The reason is that this floor here, the way the sensor is uh, uh, pointing at, uh, it's not actually detecting the floor because the, the wave sounds, the ultrasonic sounds, it's just simply reflecting. Uh, on the on the floor, so it's not returning a, a wave, okay, so it's not realistic, okay. So now you can see that it's not detecting the, the, the floor anymore, okay. Now to make sure that it's obviously proper uh, uh, detecting, any object you would like to detect, you need to uh, make sure that it has this uh, detectable property on. So for instance, let's create a cuboid here, okay, and let's move it right there. Okay, and make sure that in order to in order to be detectable, you need to select this property there. Yeah, and now if you click play, 
you will be detecting the actual object. Okay, so that's expected behavior. Thank you very much.